Good morning everyone, it's Tess and today is tip 255 and um, I my topic today came up because I was with friends last night and one of their kids and they're not they're all grown adults now but one of their kids said something that um, made me think and I thought I want to research this a little because the one thing that I've been learning through this time that I've been working with Doc V and uh, trying to make sure I stay engaged in my weight loss journey is that um, a lot of things mean the same, we just label it differently. And I guess what I mean by that is, we were talking last night, we were talking about the idea of anxiety and through like different groups uh, that I've been involved with in the past year or so, people will talk about having anxiety. And what I thought was really interesting and that I guess I'd never really thought about before is one of the young men made, made a statement that, every, well, hi, Karen, good to see you. One of the young men made a statement and he said, everybody has anxiety. And I thought, I guess I never really thought about it that way, that everybody has anxiety. And I thought, is that true? Do we all have anxiety? And why do some of us have it so more deeply embedded than others? Um, what's the catch with it? Well, everything goes back to a lot of what Doc V talks about. I started looking up articles on anxiety this morning and um, trying to identify, is it something we all have? And what is the trigger that makes it so much worse for all of us, for some of us and not for others of us? Or why are some times of our life more than others? And I found it really interesting that it goes back to negative emotions again. Um, this article was trying to talk about that because they're normal and everybody has them, uh, they kind of attributed anxiety to fear. So fear is kind of a connection to, to that type of an emotion. But everything goes back to emotions and how we're able to manage emotions. And I found that to be so interesting today because there was like actually a wheel of emotions. And you know, we all know the good words, the joy, the love, the happiness, the anxiety, the disgust, those are the lower ones. But what was so interesting about this article, and I really appreciate because Marcus was the one that mentioned it last night, and I'm like, I guess we do all have anxiety. It's just our approach. And really kind of what they're saying is negative emotions are just a trigger to tell you that there's a block or something that could potentially derail you or something that you might want to address. It's something that maybe subconsciously or that you're not addressing, you're not wanting to own yet that you might want to address sooner than later. So all they were saying is anxiety is what starts to build up and we probably all have it, but we don't recognize it till it starts to cause us a problem. So thinking of negative emotions and thinking of anxiety, just think of it as a trigger. It's a trigger, it's a symptom, and again, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a therapist. There are definitely times in life when people choose to use professional help to identify and to move through issues. But if you can catch something early and identify um, what, 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 what am I feeling and what might I need to change in my life, maybe we can relieve some of that anxiety sooner and not get caught up in that negative downward spiral. Um, I thought it was so interesting too that, that we all know these things happen to us and some of us are better at handling them, handling them. But things that might trigger us to start to be anxious have to do with maybe having too much on our plate or not taking great care of ourselves or we need to slow down. There's usually some underlying trigger. So if we just label it anxiety and we don't try to fix it, we're going to sit with it for a while and it may be painful. Again, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a psychologist, and I, I definitely think there are po times in life when people need to seek out that help because they can help you to identify faster if you're, not, if you're not at a point where you can do it on your own. But they were saying, think of it, anxiety and, and the negative emotions, they're not an illness, it's a warning. It's just a little trigger inside your body to say, hey, something needs to be addressed, okay, take a minute, identify what maybe you can make changes with and try to move forward. So what they were kind of doing next is they went into seven reasons why not all negative emotions are bad. Now, again, you don't want to sit in them. You don't want to, we've become so 
good at labeling everything and putting it in a box and giving it a pill. And sometimes that's needed. Like I said, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a therapist. There are times that you need to get professional help. But it seems like everything is just a little piece of a big picture. And if we can start to identify faster, maybe we can help ourselves a little quicker. So what they were saying is that the seven reasons why not all emotions are bad is the first one is they are normal. We all experience them. So Marcus was right. We all have some form of anxiety or fear or uncertainty. I just always looked at anxiety as this special, unique thing that happened to only certain people. And it's just in the way we, we process that negative emotion. So it's normal to have negative emotions. It's part of the human experience. It's how we handle them that is different. Number two, they say they serve a purpose. They are they have a positive intention and the positive intention is, hey, maybe you want to take a look at this area of your life and address it sooner than later before it can cause you harm. So that was for me a great way to look at it. If I start to feel a negative, instead of trying to push it away, just go, okay, is there something I need to address? Release. And that just made it so much easier for me because they were talking about like emotions and they were saying like fear means something is wrong. Sadness means there's a lack of connection. Disgust means you're trying to get, you're trying to redirect or go in a different direction. Shame and guilt is that there, there, there was some harm done that you might need to make amends for. Anger, it tends to be for protection. Hi, Rachel, good to see you. Um, surprise is you might need to focus differently. Um, and then we all know like anticipation and joy, those are positive emotions. But I, th I found it so helpful to recognize anxiety is an emotion that's generally triggered by a fear. And fear is a negative emotion that although we don't want to live in negative places, sometimes we might be able to release that negative emotion faster if we just say, hey, what is making me fearful? What can I do to fix it? Release. And Maybe that's what happens is because so much has gone on and so many people feel helpless, we get caught up in it. So if we can release it and find the tools or recognize it faster, then maybe we can move forward. Again, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a therapist. There are definitely times in life when those are tools that we all need to reach out to. But for the smaller things, if we're looking for ways to kind of take back some control there or to reduce the amount of time, that would be a great tool. I have learned to handle my emotions a lot better. And, you know, yeah, exercise helps me a lot too. Like I, I just got back from walking with my mom a little while ago because we are still walking every morning. Um, and it does help me because one, it gives me that connection time with my mom every morning. Uh, we talk out anything that's going on and there is a, a release. I find... I find it meditative to like watch the bunnies or watch the birds or, or the sunrise. There was a beautiful sunrise this morning. So I kind of sat outside and watched the sunrise. And and I think when we start to take that, it's like um, nature's full. So walking provides us with fresh air and all the gifts of nature that are so, I, I find, and I think most people find it's truly calming and truly centering and and helping us to get in alignment and and it it just helped me so much and I, I you know out of the mouth of the young ones I mean these are these are groups of kids that I used to tutor and I'm like wow how the tables turned because now they're educating me I it never dawned on me that we all have anxiety it's just in how we handle it yeah, I I love it. I can't wait till we all meet up and we can do walks together and spend time out in nature. It'll be amazing. So it kind of this article did say, you know, when we uh, when we have those negative emotions, we can try to identify. We should try to identify if it's something we can manage. Use it just to improve and to grow and to address something faster. Um, so we do know that they're normal. The seven reasons that not all our emotions are bad. We know they're normal, part of the human experience. They serve to kind of identify that we need to do something. They're warning that we're out of alignment so that we can make an adjustment faster. They inspire us to take action. So if we're feeling that negative emotion, we don't want to feel that way. If we can take the knowledge and take action, we feel better faster. 
The number five reason negative emotions aren't always bad is they allow you to hesitate, listen, and get back in tune. I think sometimes we run wild trying to take care of stuff and we don't come back to try to make sure that we're, we're taking, you know, and we all hear it. You can't pour from an empty cup, but it takes us sometimes hitting a brick wall before we start to manage our own, our own life. Uh, the number six reason negative emotions aren't bad is because if you can identify them and fix them, you can release them. So release was number six. Um, they said getting stuck with anxiety is going to cause you, cause you more issues later. So you want to find that release. Um, the other thing they kind of started talking about is anxiety or the one that's connected the emotion negative emotion connected to fear is anxiety is a grasping a clinging a pushing down of emotions and that's why it kind of bubbles up and builds up and is so much stronger than others because some of us learn to release it some of us learn to identify what it is and move forward and other of us hold it and then we end up building up these these wells that kind of explode at some point so we need to get the message so that we can address it and release it. Sometimes we'll need help getting that message and then we can move forward. And the seventh thing is, the more that we gain the skills to manage that, and Kate Aarons talks a lot about this, the more that we get the skills, we can build resistance, we can build our coping skills, we can build our tools that we use so that we can address it faster and identify what is causing us the anxiety quicker. Um, they kind of gave an ACDC abbreviation and they called it acknowledge, consider positive. In so they say acknowledge, consider what the issue is, double check, is it real or is it just a bad habit you need to fix and then choose an action. So they were kind of saying to address a negative emotion so it doesn't build into a full-blown anxiety, ACDC. And for those of us that are older, that's a band, so that might be easy to remember. And ACDC, A was acknowledge, C was consider, consider what it is that you're being warned about. D is double check, is it truly something you're being warned about or a bad habit that you need to address? And then the last C for ACDC was choose an action so that you can release it and move on. Guilt is a paralyzing sadness, depression. Um, oh, guilt is paralyzing, sadness is depression, anger is rage, fear is anxiety. So what they're saying is you wanna feel your emotions, listen to the message they're giving you, acknowledge that, that you need to address it, honor it, accept it, understand it, harness it, release it. And we can move forward better that way. Um, it was back to the same thing that they've been saying, and Doc V's talked a lot about it. We don't want to live in that low emotional place. We want to live with joy, love, and happiness. So feel those negative emotions, get the message and release them, but don't let them become you. And I thought that was such a wonderful message. Um, and it, like I said, it was out of one of the, one of the, uh, one of my childhood friends, children made the comment to me yesterday about everybody has anxiety and I thought is that true because I always thought it was a special thing I always thought it was people either had it or didn't and I didn't connect with and I should have connected with it's all about how we manage it do we have the tools to manage it to identify what's causing us to feel anxious and to address it and move forward or is it something we all have and and what i'm seeing now is it is just it's a negative emotion that some have the school the coping skills to address and release faster than others and there may always be a need to go to seek professional psychological or therapy therapist to help us to overcome because sometimes it's a very difficult thing or something that we've had for many many years and there's Abs that I would highly recommend whenever needed. I would definitely myself, I, whenever needed, I definitely would go. But if we can, for the little things, address them faster, quicker, identify it, fix it, and move forward, that feels better too because the more we release the negative emotions, address them, and move forward, life just feels better. I, I will be grateful to Doc V's tribe and to all the people that have been in my life during COVID because 
I've been able to come through it feeling better every day because I've learned coping skills from things that people have shared in the journey. And we know that when we look out into the world, there's a lot of people in pain. And I just hope that as each day passes, they're finding tools and recognizing the, the things that they can do to to let their bodies heal a little, a little bit. We don't want people to live in pain. We want people to be happy and joyful and get the greatest gift out of this life. I don't want pain for any of us. So I hope John, John Clark, choose changes. Yeah. And so I thought it was such a, so good morning, John, and good morning, Mary. Um, so I guess that was really kind of what happened as I was, I was with friends and one of the, the son, when he said, everybody has anxiety, I thought, well, why is it some of us struggle with it? And he, he was so right. It's just a matter of, have we learned the coping skills? Have we identified fast enough? Do we need to seek somebody to help us overcome it? None of us want to live in that place where we're hurting. So if we can learn the skills that we can address it faster, great. If we need help, let's reach out and get the help. Let's help each other to feel better today. And hopefully across the world, we can all start to feel a little bit better. Um, nobody wants to be unhappy. And I want the sun to shine on everybody today and every day going forward. So have a beautiful, beautiful day. And I think God's saying good morning. Thank you guys for listening and have a beautiful day. Oops, it doesn't want to end.